Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be looking at failures of timing belt driven water pumps. Now, I've actually done a water pump video before. It's one of the first few videos that I had done. But on that one, we're talking about the water pump of the CCTA engine code. Quite a bit different water pump. I'll be sure to put a link in the show notes for you guys to check out that one. For this one, we're actually stepping back in time just a tiny bit and talking about the ones that were driven by the timing belt. There are also ones that are driven by the serpentine belt, which behave very much like these do. They just may look a little bit different. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great prices, a ton of really helpful DIY videos. So check them out at shop dap.com and of course I'll put a link in the show notes for you guys as well. So what the heck is a water pump? Well lucky for us the water pump tells us exactly what it does in the name of the part. This part's meant to move coolant throughout the system. It'll move it from the engine to pull heat away from the engine through the radiator to remove the heat from the coolant and it will also push coolant through the heater core so that we can heat our cabs of our vehicle in the winter time. So how does it work? That's actually a great question so we're going to step out in the garage and I'm going to show you. Now this engine is kind of the exception because the timing belt does not drive the water pump, but I want to give you an idea of sort of what this looks like and how a water pump would fit into this circuit. For this example, we're going to pretend that this roller here is the water pump. As the timing belt turns, obviously a faster revolution than I'm turning it here, it rotates the water pump. And as it rotates the outside gear, it'll rotate the impeller on the inside as well. So this will give you a good idea of what it looks like when your timing belt's rotating and turning the water pump. And of course, your engine's turning at a much faster RPM than I'm turning the engine here. Now, as I was rotating that engine around, what was happening on the inside is this impeller is turning, actually moving the coolant through the system. So how does a water pump fail? Well, it can fail in a few different ways. First off, it can leak. It can leak from the seal. It can also leak from the weep hole at the bottom of the pump. Either way, the result is a replacement of the water pump. The most common way that they fail is actually the plastic compressor wheel. Nope. The most common way that they fail is the plastic impeller wheel will break away from the pin. It'll form a tiny crack and then another tiny crack and then another tiny crack and eventually the whole piece will just separate from the pump. You could also have the water pump seize. And generally when that happens it's a bad time because it usually breaks the timing belt as well. There's one other way that I actually totally forgot about until I started turning this pump, and that's failure of maybe the internal bearings causing noise. So you can actually hear. The symptoms of a bad water pump are gonna be pretty easy. It can make noise, or it will overheat the vehicle. Or in the case of it seizing, it will cause catastrophic engine damage to the car. How do we diagnose this style of water pump? If it's noisy, it might be a little tricky. You may have to isolate it by taking the timing belt off and rotating this around by hand like I was just doing or perhaps spraying a little bit of lubricant behind the gear in order to quiet it down. But if you're overheating, there's a really easy way to check water pump flow. First thing you wanna do is make sure that your car is not a million degrees. Take the coolant bottle cap off. Then remove the return line that you see here from the coolant reservoir. Take the line that you removed and put it in the bottle so if there is coolant flow, it's just gonna flow right back in the bottle. Have someone else start the vehicle and then rev the engine up to about 2000 RPM. You should get a pretty good flow of coolant. If you're getting no coolant out of it at all, odds are you have a bad water pump or some blockage in the cooling system. I'm sure there's other guys that have little tricks and tips on how to diagnose water pumps. This method has worked really well for me over the years. As far as time to failure, I've seen these fail as early as 15,000 miles and then last to 120,000 miles. This is a part that you're gonna to wanna to replace along with the timing belt. So whenever you're due for the timing belt service, go ahead and put a water pump on. The labor's just a little bit more and it might save you a ton of headache down the road. So there is a debate, metal impeller versus plastic impeller. From the factory, most of these have a plastic or a composite impeller in them. Generally, the metal one was an aftermarket swap. Now, I understand a lot of people switching to the metal impeller because then they don't have to worry about the impeller coming apart, and I understand that. I also have a lot of people say, I don't want anything but the factory part. If it's gonna fail, I'd rather fail it while it's overheating, so I have a little bit of warning. I also understand that too. I don't know that there's really a right answer. I will say a few things. Volkswagen generally designs things for a specific purpose. Sometimes it doesn't work out so well, but a lot of times it does. We may just not understand fully the purpose, 
And when I did the timing belt on my 1.8 Turbo Passat, I put a factory water pump in it. Hey, there we have it, failure of timing belt driven water pumps. Hey, if you liked the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube, I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And, super shout out to the sponsor of the day, Police Auto Parts, check them out at shop.